watching how the cryptocurrency market evolve is now like watching the paint dry, right? We all agree on that front. But if we look deeper, we get more information. If we look into what really matters, we can understand what is happening because the market right now is showing you signs, signals, and some of these signals are like, okay, I'm here to stay, I'm making a change, and it is happening for a reason. And this tweet from Airy kind of gives you the real idea of how things are moving. Now, don't misunderstand that 90% of six trillion market is being handled by ODL. It's actually representing, right? You actually can do that in that 40 market. So when you look towards the traction of XRP, it is there. Just after two hours, it actually gets traction. So XRP as an asset is staying there and receiving investors. One of the primary reasons for that is the world is changing. And you look through what they are thinking about for the next two years, three years, five years. It's all about tokenization and it's all about moving assets on the distributed ledger where you literally need a bridge asset. So as you dig deeper, you get to see how things are evolving and directly when you are looking at what these guys are talking about, it kind of actually gives you further clarity that this technology is here to stay and this particular asset is really making a dent in the existing system. Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys learn how to become the next top 10 percentage. Now, if you are really thinking about becoming the next top 10 percentage or next top one percentage, that's thinking about success in life. So that's why this five minute run may really help you towards reaching that goal. Now, jumping back, if you think about cryptocurrency market, and these guys giving banks and institutions like BlackRock an entry point into the crypto market and then look at the charts, you'd be like, okay, mm, they are timing this really well. Now, you do see huge wicks to the upside out of the downside. Yeah, market manipulation will always be there. But think about this. These kind of giant institutions coming in and buying close to these supports mean that they are making money, right? They are making money. Each time you buy close to the support, it go up. Now, we are here and you are able to watch these news that they do not have any ban from the Federal Reserve. So the banking organizations can actually hold crypto. Now, it will be alternative assets, but they are looking for how things evolve and they do understand that the investors, passive investors, ordinary investors and different funds are now looking into it because it's showing huge potentials. When you are in the market, yes, it has not changed. You are looking at Bitcoin, Ether, XRP. They are more or less at the same range. They have not actually fluctuated much. Then you are looking for the top 100 and the gainers like the Davos here, it's actually moving through. And if you remember, we had our calls here back in the day and we were talking about this breaking higher and reaching through these levels. And right now, we can actually see that. The market is doing something. So when you are in the market, look for assets with volume and then try identifying patterns. Now it can be short term, it can be medium term, depending upon what type of investor you are. But Fundamentals is important. If you are putting any position from medium to long term, maybe a year to three or four, this really is key. If you understand why you are investing in an asset and you do know that the asset is expanding throughout this world, the use case increases. And it kind of clearly shows you that people are interested in buying this because of its use case.
When the on-demand liquidity solution as a crypto solution, they put it, is now solving a big problem, this kind of shows you the use case. Now that's just one part of the use. But then you look at payments as a base. This is remittance. Payments as a base and that goes through trade finance. That goes through almost everything. Then you come on to the market side. The market, the manipulation, everything. You kind of see like, okay, this is really sad news. Another big company showing you Genesis, right? Genesis parent company DCG just shut down its 3.5 billion wealth management division as the crypto market is behaving like what it is doing now. And now you actually think about this. If we go back in time, they were actually talking about drop the gold and buy Bitcoin. Now, if you are here from some time and you are like a macro guy, you are looking for everything else to understand how things evolve, you are primarily looking at dollar. If you remember, we talked about this. A breakout, a retest, and a bounce. So if you are on a four hour time horizon, you now can see that. You break higher, you retest, you bounce. You're making a higher high, higher low, and you are continuing that trend. So how long can this pain in the crypto market exist? Till you hit your retest range. So this retest range is going to be 107, 108. And if the dollar is strong in between, you get bad data from CPI or even the Fed at that point in time, you will observe that we may go higher. But chances are huge in my thought process that you may not actually go above this level. You may visit this level, slowly grind higher, test that and then get rejected. That is what I'm thinking personally. Because trend lines do matter and we, those who understand that, understand that clearly. On short term, when you are looking at the pattern and then suggesting, okay, this is moving higher, it should align with your macro thought process. That's where, you know, you see Netflix going higher. Say I'm in India right now. Whichever home I'm going, there are like two or three different children and all of them have access to Netflix Prime and I'm like, they have both. And it's kind of a portion where they're like, they're going to school, they're talking about the story, that story, whatever. It really shows you the Netflix and Amazon Prime is going to explode through next six months to nine months. Not in price, but in usage. People are getting more and more traction because they are now comfortable sitting home after the COVID. They don't actually really want to go out. And with the cost of living rising so high, this level of entertainment is easy and less expensive so once you understand the fundamentals and then you're looking at the trend lines you see it bouncing from a long-term trend line great now we go look at gold what is it actually doing gold is actually running up in value agreed but on the macro is where we should focus if you are a macro guy thinking about what gold is doing right now you can easily identify that it is showing you something which you should not miss. This is literally showing you that it had a rounded bottom after which it consolidated. Now this is key in this channel. Now why is that so important? You can actually go back to a crypto coin which is like, you know, DAG constellation and then look at its chart on a weekly or a three day and you will be able to observe that it did same. Now we don't have that access here in this one. What we'll do is we'll go here and take the DAG chart from the coin market cap and you will be able to see that it did similar structure. It had this rounded bottom. It consolidated afterwards in a similar pattern and then it went up higher. So here, it actually did the measured move to the upside, which is huge. Now you go back and look at gold and ask like, what's the measured move in this particular pattern? So imagine if gold is actually going to do a 80 percentage to the upside, what would the gold price be? And what does that actually mean for your portfolio? Do you have any exposure to gold? Maybe 5% of your portfolio. Now you think about silver. 
And you're like, okay, silver is still inside this pattern. We have not yet broken to the upside and we're showing that we're slowing down. So if we slow down, what is the support level you're eyeing at? It's not that low, it's 22. And right now it's 23, so it's not much different. So if you happen to come down here to 22 and then bounce, break this one, that is like it's going to follow gold. And that's just the starting point of something like this, which can be huge. Now, take the start process of gold, silver, dollar and go to the stock market. Now we are still here in the stock market showing you we are retesting. We can bounce to the upside or we may actually come back down breaking this. We don't know what it's actually doing right now. Right now it's kind of neutral. But then you look at the dollar and it suggests you, okay, I'm doing a retest. So the market, the stocks, the assets should feel the pressure. But after that, I'm going to drop. And as I drop, stocks, assets, different investment products, are going to go higher because they are priced in dollar terms. Now, you actually take the same thought process back into the market and you are going to look at XRP. Now, we all would like to see this asset moving higher, grinding to the upside on a regular basis. But right now, what we are getting is this. This is XRP against Bitcoin, not dollar, Bitcoin. So when you actually look at this, yes, we have been in a similar pattern before, but right now you're testing the 200 day moving average on a daily chart. The RSI is not showing us that we are breaking to the upside as we wish to. You can actually say like we tried once, but we failed. We are literally inside this pattern and we are like, okay, we need to see something huge. So you are, going on to a weekly chart and the weekly chart for xrp versus bdc actually shows you i'm following this trend line and i'm trending higher now this is happening all the way from may 2019 and here we are in 2023 we have not yet seen a blast in the price of xrp that's where the sec case the fear you know all those kind of things comes in but now you zoom in and you ask that question like, okay, agreed, all of those us making a concern. But this level has been broken to the upside and you're slowly going down to retest that level. You have not breached that to the downside. And the momentum to the downside is reducing here, which kind of easily gives you a thought process. I don't know when this is going to happen. But you are going to see this break higher, break the 200 day moving average, test that one and then start to bounce. This is coming. The real question which everyone would be asking is like, okay, if I can position myself at the bottom part of this market, which is kind of here, averagely, because it's really going to be hard to get the absolute bottom. So imagine your dollar cost averaging to this range. Now that increases your ROI to the max. Keep that in mind. So if you are in the market right now, then you are going to look at, okay, what can I gain in terms of the USD pair, USDT, USDC, whatever you are in. If what we talked about in XRP BTC pair plays out, we may actually not break to the downside. Instead, we would try and break to the upside. Great. Now you are here on a shorter time horizon chart, a daily chart. Then you are looking for like, okay, what's the price actually doing? And you feel like there is bearish sentiment in the price action. You just look at this range and it does feel like, okay, there is base still present inside this asset. It's not actually a positive thing to hear, but if you understand the market dynamics, it is. Look at this. It is actually making a head and shoulder pattern. And we don't want that to break to the downside. And if it actually does break, now you will have a 10 percentage move to the downside. So right now, the price is 0.33. You may drop to 0.3. In some of the exchanges, we have already dropped 0.29, wicked that low, and then went back up. So that is not going to be something new for a lot of us. So if there is something like that happening in the market, which actually gives you a long wick to the downside, don't go into that panic mode. Market is here 
and the world has not ended. At least the crypto world is alive, right? So those to actually give you the perspective of we are going down to zero will always be there. You go look at Bitcoin going to zero and hit the news and the Google and you'll see things from 2014, 2016, 2017. Every time when the price drops, they say this asset class is dead. And then you see it coming back up, making all time highs and giving returns to those who held on strongly which is the hardest part to do because of the patience and you need to keep your emotions down, which is hard. I understand that. And that's why this channel, five minutes a day or a week may actually help you. So guys, if you received value for your time, please do hit that like and subscribe button. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.